All right, sports fans, how's everybody out there doing? William Martin coming at you one more time here on YouTube with another edition of the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge Podcast. Now, for the first time since 2013, there will not be any new entries into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown due to the fact that no players this year on the ballot were able to get at least 75% of the votes from the baseball writers in order to gain entry. The closest former players, starting pitcher Kurt Schilling received 71.1% of the vote, Barry Bonds received 61.8, and Roger Clemens received 61.6. Now, there wasn't a slam dunk uh, so to speak, on this year's ballot. Of course, you know, in the case of Barry Bonds, this was his ninth time on the ballot. In the case of both Roger Clemens and Kurt Schilling as well, this was also their ninth times on the ballot. And of course, in the case of Bonds and Clemens, they have been linked to performance enhancing drugs. Now, you look at it, the biggest jumps that were made on the ballot this year that came from Scott Rowland, Todd Helton, and Billy Wagner. Scott Rowland went up more than 17.5% as he was at 52.9 percent of the votes billy wagner went up 14.7 as he received 46.4 percent of the vote and todd helton was up 15.7 percent as he received 44.9 percent of the vote um but you look at it again like i said there really wasn't a, a uh, slam dunk um you could say what you want i know that kurt schilling has rubbed plenty of people uh the wrong way for his political stances and other um, things outside of the baseball world. But if you're just going off of what he was able to do on the baseball diamond on that mound every fifth day, he definitely deserves to be there. You're talking about a guy that has more than 3,000 strikeouts, 3,116 to be exact. He led the National League in strikeouts twice. He had three seasons where he struck out at least uh, 300 batters. He had Three seasons where he won at least 20 games. Uh, he finished as a Cy Young runner-up three times, twice in the National League with the Arizona Diamondbacks and once in 2004 with the Boston Red Sox. He was also the World Series MVP for the Diamondbacks uh, back in 2001. So this guy was a big game pitcher. You saw what he was able to do in the postseason. But again, he rubbed people the wrong way off the baseball diamond. However, this is about what you did on the baseball diamond. And if you're talking about uh, what the contributions that a person had to baseball on the diamond and then Schilling definitely uh, deserves to be in that mix. Uh, you look at it, though, uh, going for next year, and it's not a big time. You're not going to see like four or five guys getting in. Uh, as far as some of the notable first time candidates that you're going to see on the ballot in 2022, you look at David Ortiz, Alex Rodriguez and a pair of relief pitchers and Joe Nathan and Jonathan Papelbon. And out of this group, and of course, there are other players that are going to be first time um uh, players on a ballot I think the only guy that's really a slam dunk is David Ortiz and I know that some people are going to try to hold it against him about being a designated hitter I know that there are going to be some people that are going to talk about the Mitchell report but you look at Big Poppy 541 career home runs he helped the Boston Red Sox uh, win three World Series championships. He was also a World Series MVP. And you're talking about a guy, a lifetime 286 career hitter. Like I said, 541 career home runs, 1,768 uh, runs batted in. And even in his final year with the Red Sox in 2016 at the age of 40, uh, Big Poppy went 315, had 38 home runs, 48 doubles, and 127 runs batted in. Alex Rodriguez, definitely the numbers are there, but he has a litter pass with multiple suspensions for performance enhancing drugs so he's definitely going to be out of the question uh John, joe nathan 377 career saves jonathan papelbon was another guy who had more than 300 career saves i don't see them getting in just due to the fact that you already have billy wagner on the ballot and billy wagner is starting to get some steam this was his sixth year on the ballot he's close to 50 percent now and i don't see a situation where you put joe nathan or uh, Jonathan Papelbon the first time around as closers uh, in front of him. I think Big Poppy is the only shoe in. Um, it would not surprise me, honestly, that Schilling would get in in 2022. I mean, he's so close, and I think there's going to be some blowback for a lot of writers because, again, it's not the writer's job. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's not the writer's jobs to go out there and police baseball. Um, you could say, what, again, you could say what you want 
as far as what Schilling has done outside of baseball. But at the end of the day, if you're talking about a person's contributions, then Schilling should be in there. I mean, and listen, there, there are not a whole bunch of choir boys um, that are currently in the, in, in the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame. We could, you know, have a whole uh, podcast on the likes of Ty Cobb and I could keep going down the list. Uh, so I think Schilling gets in next year. I think David Ortiz gets in and it'd be interesting because both of these guys helped the Boston Red Sox win the World Series in 2004 for the first time in 86 years. Um, another question is, should the writers have the final say as in regards to who gets into the hall? And honestly, I've said it before and I'll say it again. And the answer is no. Um, you see this problem consistently come Coming up for both the baseball and football Hall of Fame, where the writers have uh, you know too much say. The baseball definitely more than football as far as who's going to get in. The writers are not the police of these sports, and I think the writers should have. Uh, some say, but I don't think they're the final straw. I think there should be a committee from the hall. I think there should also be a committee of former players. <clears throat> Uh, to come in there and chime in on as well, because I, I think, you know, we've seen it before and this is not the first time that this has happened. Sometimes we've seen writers who simply don't like players and, you know, they hold it against them. And I mean, again, you're not the police on this matter. Uh, this is not a perfect system. It is definitely a flawed. This is what they're using right now. But I, like a lot of other people, uh, don't agree with it. But I do. I would not be surprised to see both the Schilling and Ortiz get in in 2022 uh being so close as far as Schilling is he definitely um he's going to get i think he's going to get enough uh support between now and this time next year uh to get that you know 71.1 up to, to like 75.1 or even further uh so we'll have to wait and see what happens but for the first time since 2013 we are not going to see any new enshrinees heading into cooperstown for the baseball hall of fame so folks that is going to wrap it up and as always i want to take this time out to thank you for tuning into the 300 pounds of sports knowledge podcast I want to thank all of the subscribers out there and if you have not already please feel free to subscribe to this channel now if you're on twitter please feel free to follow me at 300 pounds of sports and like i always say if you follow me it'll be my pleasure to follow you right back there's also the sports discussion group on facebook at the sports depot 365 you can check it out Drop a line and be a part of one of the better sports debating sites going on social media. So once again, fine folks, my name is William Martin. Take care and have yourselves a wonderful day.